Hi everyone, this video today is just to discuss the, um, the use of in-tank DPF additives. Um, when you should use them and when you shouldn't use them. So unfortunately something we see quite often um, across the DPF Doctor Network is when vehicles are presented to us they quite often have a damage of DPFs due to excessively high temperatures in them. So um, it's important that you know when is it a good time and when is it not a good time to use an in-tank additive. So today I'm going to give you a couple of examples of um, the differences between certain in-tank additives. As you can see, um, you know, we use GLM lubricants additives. Um, it's a brand that we trust, real high quality products, um, and it's, you know, it's our product of choice, but it's not to say that there aren't other good additives out there. So this video is just to give you a little bit of an understanding of the differences. And if you are a garage owner and you're using in-tank additives, it's something that you can maybe research or go and data log the vehicle and, and look at certain things to know that you're using the right product at the right time. Because that's very much the key, is using the right product for the right time. So let's look at GLM's additives and discuss the difference. Now, first of all, this is what you'll be drawn to most if you're having DPF problems, because you go into um, a parts shop and human nature you're generally attracted to the, the cheaper additives. So um, th this one here, made by JLM, is DPF Regen Plus. So we'll bring that in so you can see it there. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but if you look on their website, it tells you on the tin. So JLM are very good at telling you what its purpose is, what should you be using this for. So, and, and it will do what it says on the tin. So this here tells you, prevent DPF blocking. Now it's important that you understand the difference. This DPF Regen Plus is designed to help regeneration. Regeneration is a self-cleaning process um, and that's what the vehicle does to keep the DPF clean. It requires temp a good temperature and exhaust of over 500 degrees centigrade in there. So what happens if you're, if you're doing a lot of town driving is the vehicle will not naturally Meet, meet good temperatures to, to carry out a passive regeneration and it will also only get a short time scale to complete a regeneration. So if you maybe only once per week get out on a decent run, you know, of, of 60 miles an hour, you might have a, a shorter time scale for regeneration to take place. So what this will do, this will assist your exhaust temperatures to get up to temperature quicker and it will help regeneration happen over a shorter space of time. So if you're doing a lot of town driving, this is good because it will it will increase your exhaust temperatures um, to help assist even passive regeneration. So, um, if, you know, if you're going up an incline in the town and the, the exhaust wouldn't naturally get hot enough, then this will help it. Now, it's really important to know, you, you know, using the right product at the right time, because this is not designed, it does not say on the tin that it's a DPF cleaner. Unfortunately, some brands out there use a similar chemistry to a regenerator and market it as a DPF cleaner. Anything that's iron-based, which, which this is, is a really good catalyst for increasing exhaust temperatures. But that's not something you want to do on a blocked DPF. On a blocked DPF, um, the ECU, the, the vehicle's engine management system, will be trying to increase exhaust temperatures. So you don't want to be putting something in that's going to further increase them and then by the time they come to us, we'll see damage or melted DPFs. So this is a brilliant product as a preventative measure. It's not something they use when you're having DPF problems. It's something that you should use to try and prevent DPF problems. That's what it says on the tin and that's what it does. So if you're using a product, workshop guys, if you're putting something in a tank of a customer's vehicle, what I would suggest doing is go and data log your exhaust temperatures on a certain road test route put your additive in there and then do the same same road test again and see what has it done to your exhaust temperatures. It gives you an idea of, of what you're using. You know, great product for, for doing its correct purpose. So preventative measure and a lot of the a lot of in-tank additives you see out there are a great preventative measure, whether they're classed or labelled as a DPF cleaner or a DPF regenerator, most products that you get off the shelf. Uh, certainly at the cheaper end of the scale will be a DPF regenerator. So use them for that purpose. You haven't got a DPF light on and you're maybe going on holiday or you're going for a good run out 
you think I'll give the you know give the DPF a bit of a chance, then that's absolutely fine. You know, if you're a regular town driver, you know, uh, on my wife's own car, she does a lot of town driving stuff, so we use this regularly, and it keeps the DPF clean, absolutely bang on. So whatever brand you're using, most of them are more suited as a preventative measure. So we'll move on uh, to GLM's DPF particle, particulate filter cleaner. So DPF filter cleaner. So you see the change in term there. This is again why we like GLM because it does what it says on the tin. It's, pretty, it's straightforward, tells you there, highly effective DPF cleaner. So what this does, this is cerium and platinum based. So this actually brings the, the regen temperature down. So it's much safer if you do have a moderate blockage. You know, if you have a, a, an extreme blockage where there's a, you know, you're experiencing a loss of power and, and, and the restriction is getting really bad, then you should seek professional help, you know, um, because you don't know if you've got a boost leak or something that's making it block up really quickly. But, but if, you, you know, if, if you're experiencing DPF problems, uh, the car's still driving fairly normally, you know, and it's a moderate blockage, then the, this stuff's nice and safe to use because this is working with you. It's, it, is, it is designed to clean a block DPF and it will do it nice and safely. Um, so it's really important with either additive that you read the instructions. Blokes, admittedly, you know, we tend to refer to instructions when it's too late. So read the instructions because the dosages are really, really important. So if we go back to this one that's, that's designed to increase exhaust temperatures, it's important that you read the correct dosage so if the whatever brand of added if it, if it says use it with a minimum of 40 litres of fuel or 60 litres of fuel then that's really important for many reasons one it, you don't want to cause too high a temperature and two it's going in your fuel tank as well and the you know the chemists that develop any product they take into consideration lubrication for your fuel system so it's important that you use it at the correct dosage so um that goes for your preventative measure or your DPF cleaner. So preventative for us, it would be the Regen Plus, a DPF cleaner. So we have a customer comes in and um, you, you know, the, the DPF blockage is, is moderate. You know, it's, it doesn't justify us doing a full clean on it. And then we would use this and carry out an extended road test. So this stuff's just nice and safe for putting in the tank. So again, like most things, um, in-tank additives can be really, really good or really, really bad. So I just thought I'd take this video uh, for you today as a bit of a, you know, to give you a little bit more understanding. For me, if you're not sure what the brand is that you're putting in, if you're using JLM products, then the DPF cleanout is safe to put in there when you are having DPF problems. The DPF Regen Plus is the one to use as a preventative measure. So whatever brand you're using, ask, ask the questions. Uh, but it's critical that you use a correct dosage. One can to 60 litres, then that's what you should use. You know? So hopefully you found that useful. Um, and if you need any advice or if you have any questions, then just give us a shout. Cheers now.